Hi, I'm Mary Logston, and once again, here I am at your library. I don't know if you recall, but about a year ago this time, your library was in the midst of unprecedented change. Today, for my show, I've invited back to the program Lynn Carey, the library director, so she and I can take a little quick look back and also give you a sneak peek on what's ahead at your Ames Public Library. So as I told our audience um, today, I've invited back to at your library, Lynn Carey. Welcome, Lynn. Thank you so much. It's nice to be here again. Well, we were trying to think a moment ago um, how long it's been since you um, sat down with me for at your library, and I'm going to guess it's been about I don't know at least nine months or so. Sometime I, last I winter. I believe so. It seems like um, many, many happy children and satisfied adults later. Yes. <laughs> well, that's exactly, that's kind of the summary of business here at our temporary location, because for those who haven't been paying attention, we've been operating out of a temporary location since about this time last year, I think. This will air in December. Can you recall even a little bit what was happening <laughs> this time last year? Can I take you back uh, a, a bit in time? The, the first recollection is extreme sleep deprivation. Yes. Yeah. Um, we were extremely busy this time last mm -hmm. year. Um, in fact, um, a few weeks ago, we were reminiscing as a staff about a, a day in November that was extremely busy for us mm -hmm. where we, um, of course, were providing service from 515 Douglas and opening bids for our construction project. Right. And then that evening, having a board meeting, all going home and getting a few hours sleep. And then the next morning, starting the big move over to the temporary facility where we're sitting now. Yeah. And at that time, we knew what it all looked like on paper. Uh, we knew that our plans were, were sound and that it looked like it would all work, but we had no idea how it would truly function and how it would feel. Mm. And um, so I remember saying last year yeah. at this time that uh, we were just thrilled with how it all turned out. But again, at that point, we really didn't know how how it would function mm -hmm. through the seasons. And so now we can say that this temporary library has been very successful and people have embraced the location mm -hmm. and the services that are happening from here. And many people who are new to Ames or new to the library know this as their only library in Ames. All of that is exactly my um, experience. I think um, it, we almost are can get into the um, frame of mind of taking for granted the fact that we're running so smoothly because it really is business as usual for the public. As they come in, they can expect um, to see all of the collection that they saw over at 515 Douglas. So the, the resources are vast. Um, and we've got our computer commons up and running. So folks who want to get onto the internet are still able to do so. Um, those who want to just sit and read a magazine or a book or actually access our wireless um, services on their own laptop um, can certainly do so as well. So we are just really in the business of delivering services here, much like we were over um, at our original location. Absolutely. And the, the main resource I think that people enjoy here is our fabulous staff. And um, all of our staff moved mm -hmm. over with us. Yep. And you can walk in the door and see the familiar, friendly faces and mm -hmm. get the kind of help that people have been used to for, for years in Ames. Well, and it's, it's really been fun, to, like as you say, to go through all of the seasons. Um, now that we uh, see that this works, uh, we don't at all want to give the impression that we want to stay here. <laughs> we are excited about the construction that that's very much um, in evidence over at our home on Douglas Avenue. So do you mind getting us a little bit up to date on how the construction project is going? I can talk about it for hours. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's, um, it's going very well. Mm -hmm. um, about almost a, a year ago, we broke ground mm -hmm. and um, didn't really know what the seasons would bring for us. We 
had a great construction season early on and then were um, set back a little bit by rain in mm -hmm. the spring. Um, by late summer, nobody knew what the word rain meant anymore, yeah. uh, and we were able to make up some of those last days. Uh, we're just thrilled with the work crews that are um, putting their expertise into this building. Um, it's, it amazes me to see all of the details and all of the um, really considerable skill that goes into a building project of this size. And so we are on track budget-wise, right. we're on track timeline-wise, and everything's going great guns. Um, I would encourage anybody who has an opportunity to drive by 515 mm -hmm. Douglas and, and see what's going on. At this point, it's uh, the exterior uh, looks pretty similar to what it will when yeah. we open, and all of the work is now going on in the interior. I noticed that. I, I have myself been um, guilty of driving around slowly <laughs> and uh, you know, pulling into a parking spot and glancing at different angles of the building. And it's very much in evidence that the, the exterior is complete. You can tell where the windows are. Um, and then I just noticed yesterday, um, peering in, that you can see um, evidence of rooms. Yes, inside all, as all well. The, so that's the terrific. framing is up and the yeah. walls are going up. Um, very it's, exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah, that's just great. Um, talking about um, exciting, one of the things that I uh, I hope folks realize is that in planning for the new building, there of course will be quite a bit more space. Um, are there some features of the new building that you think will especially delight our customers? Um, or do you want to just give them a little tease of what, what's to come? Sure, and part of what, what we'll see at the renovated building mm -hmm. is what's missing from this temporary space. Yes. And that is um, meeting rooms, mm -hmm. um, more civic engagement type space. Uh, we'll have a much, much larger youth services area mm -hmm. even than we had before and certainly larger than, than the corner that we have yes. here. Um, we'll have more seating mm -hmm. and a more of a variety of types of seating so that people can have small collaborative groups. Um, they can go off in a corner by themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, they can have a quiet space, uh, a more active space. So just a lot of different types of use of the building. Mm -hmm. But the, the meeting rooms and the larger children's space are probably the primary things that people will notice. Yeah. The um, space for adults upstairs will be bright with light and mm -hmm. um, quite large. Yes. So it, the, the size, the difference in scale yeah. will be immediately noticeable, but I think more than that, it's the type of space, the variety mm -hmm. um, that can serve a diverse audience. It's really, really um, an exciting time, and I know staff has been um, gearing up. Um, basically, we never really geared down, <laughs> uh, but we're gearing up. Um, so to speak, uh, to prepare for the changes ahead. Uh, how, how would you summarize um, the work that we're engaged in now this winter as we look ahead to moving back? Well, I think moving over to the temporary space was a um, just a, a glimpse into the kind type of work that we would be engaged in over the next year. Mm -hmm. and. At that point, we were planning this space. We were um, looking at all the different features, but we, we had equipment, we had um, methodology for how we operated, mm -hmm. and we were scaling down a bit. Right. Um, now, we are looking at ramping all of that up and getting new systems mm -hmm. and new ways of being. And it affects absolutely every aspect of our work lives and our service to the public. Mm -hmm. So we have, I think we're up to maybe 11 different um, staff teams mm -hmm. that are working hard to make sure that when we open the doors of the renovated building that everything goes smoothly and that we're delighting our customers, mm -hmm. um, including our staff, that we, we know where everything is and how to use everything. So um, technology is really pushing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. We um, made a promise to the community that when we moved into this building, we would be utilizing technology to be as efficient as possible mm -hmm. and to provide the best service possible. So we're looking at things like automated materials handling systems, um, uh, 
more reliance on the self-checks mm -hmm. that we are working with yeah. now. Um, we're looking at the communication systems that work with our new configuration of, of providing service from two different floors. Right. So having staff have an opportunity to communicate with each other to serve the public and how we will communicate with um, external customers mm -hmm. as well. Um, we're in the midst of this. We're also getting a new bookmobile, so mm. we're working on that. We're revamping our computer system that um, allows us to do everything that we do from ordering books to our catalog that uh, public use to access our materials. So really every aspect mm. of service. This is not just about a building. It's not just about a building. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, and, and I will circle back to staff. We're also looking at, at a reorganization of our staffing um, because again we can't just pick up the model that we right. have right now and move back into a building that is 60 percent larger right. and operating out of two floors. Mm -hmm. So we are analyzing every aspect of service and um, how we can um, get trained and up to speed on all of this technology and ready to open the doors just ready to serve the public. Yeah. Well, that's a great summary. And uh, 11 groups, if I had to, st I, I don't know if I could have remembered all of the <laughs> different teams that were that are operating right now, but you're absolutely right. Um, we are doing a lot of analysis and we're working really well together um, to offer the best service we can in a fabulous new building when mm -hmm. the time comes. Last question I have for you is, um, to what extent do you see the community participating in our um, remove? Well, th we have two teams that are addressing that. Mm -hmm. One um, is, I think it probably has a more official term, but I call it the party team. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs one of those. Yes. So we are, we're just starting to plan um, the celebrations that okay. will accompany our grand opening. Mm -hmm. And so we plan to have a, a series of programs that mm -hmm. are, um, or opportunities for all ages to mm -hmm. get to experience the, the fabulous new space. Um, so that's really fun. Mm -hmm. We also, um, you've alluded to the MOVE team. Right. We will be reforming as the REMOVE team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll have an opportunity again for volunteers. Um, I hesitate to say opportunity because it's an absolute necessity <laughs> from our, our, yes. our perspective. Um, but volunteers will again uh, play a very, very major role in right. our move into the new building. And uh, we're, we're looking at ways that we can involve even more people. Mm -hmm. um, our last move, we had very, very specific times and very specific duties that worked extremely well. There were people who we couldn't fit into the schedule. So we're looking for some ways that we can make sure that everybody gets a chance to claim this building as their own because truly yep. it does belong to the, the citizens of Ames. They are the ones who made this happen mm -hmm. and um, we want to have everybody be able to celebrate it together. Well, I, that's a, a big piece of what I'm looking forward to. Um, the working with the whole community and celebrating. Mm -hmm. So I thank you so much for taking time out of a busy schedule to uh, kind of recap where we are and get me excited about where we're heading. Yeah. So thanks so much, Lynn. Thank you. And stick around because uh, we will show you some of the new uh, materials that have recently been added to the Amos Public Library's collection.
Wasn't that fun to sit down and uh, hear from Lynn about what we can look forward to in the months ahead here at the library? Well, before we get too much ahead of ourselves, I do want to remind you that there is a lot happening today here at your library. And particularly in December, it's a great time to pick up a copy of page one or check our website where we have all information about library activities and see what is happening here um, at your library. For example, we will be continuing our book discussions uh, in December and into the winter months. Those are Books at Noon, which meets on Wednesday afternoons at 12 to 1 o'clock, Mystery Lovers Book Club, um, Great Books, uh, let's talk about it and also a newly um, organized book discussion series called Mixed Lit. So please check page one if you're really eager to sit down and chat about the books you're reading. Um, we have got all kinds of options for you. If what you want is a little bit of encouragement to just curl up with a book this winter um, for some cozy reads, uh, that's something we can help you with as well. We will have a winter reading program again this year. The forms for that will be available for you to pick up on December 26th. The theme is Cozy Up to a Book. So please stop by the information desk to pick up your winter reading program. Stop by to ask questions about the various book discussions we have scheduled and always just feel free to stop by and ask us any questions that you have about using the Ames Public Library. Thanks so much for being with me today. Once again, this is Mary Logsdon at your library.